Hello again. Welcome back. Now that you've had some practice working with accuracy and precision and counting significant digits, we're ready to move on to unit conversions. What we're going to do is convert from one type of unit to another. For example, we might change from a certain number of feet into a certain number of inches. Or you might ask how many centimeters are in a certain number of inches. That's pretty much our idea here. It's a fairly straightforward process. The only thing we have to be careful of is that we remember that we are working with measured quantities, and measured quantities have error associated with them. And when we convert them into other units, that error tags along. And so we want to make sure that we are not changing the error that goes along with a measurement. All right, so here, let's get started. Uh, grab your guided student notes and your calculator, and we'll begin with some vocabulary. The first thing we want to talk about is what a conversion factor is. And a conversion factor is a statement that two quantities are equal. Or if you want to be picky about things, we could say they are approximately equal. Because, of course, we have both types. You already know that 60 minutes is exactly equal to one hour. That's how an hour is defined. But one meter is a metric unit. And to convert it over to a US unit, we're only going to end up with an approximate result. So a meter is about 1.09 yards. An exact conversion factor is a conversion factor that contains then equals, right? 60 minutes is exactly one hour. Every value in an exact conversion factor is treated as if it has infinitely many significant digits. An inexact conversion factor is a little bit different. By now you've probably figured out that the inexact conversion factor has the approximately symbol in it. So that's like this one up here, one meter is about 1.09 yards. The one, the first part of the inexact conversion factor is treated as an exact value. So we don't have to worry about significant digits associated with the one, but the other number we have to care about significant digits. That's our approximation. And so for the other number, we are going to count the significant digits. OK. The key to doing all of these unit conversions are unit ratios. A unit ratio is a fraction. It's a special kind of fraction because the value is equal to 1. And the thing that makes it interesting is that it has a different unit in the numerator than it does in the denominator. So it has different units in the numerator. and denominator. OK, so let's take a peek at those. The thing about the conversion factors is that every conversion factor generates two unit ratios. Um, we had 60 minutes was equal to an hour a second ago, and so a unit ratio for that conversion factor would be 60 minutes in the numerator and one hour in the denominator. So now you can see the value of this is equal to one because the numerator and the denominator are the same size. They're just expressed differently. Of course, we could flip this over and we could say we have one hour in the numerator 
and 60 minutes in the denominator. So every conversion factor generates two unit ratios. Your job is to take this conversion factor here, one ton is equal to 2,000 pounds, and write two unit ratios of your own. So pause the recording and come back when you are done. And hopefully your answer looks like that. Now you want to be careful when abbreviating pounds as LB. Use uh, maybe a script L or something. Look at your paper for a second and ask yourself if what you wrote might accidentally be misread as having a 1 at the end of your number. Does it look like 2,000 or does it look like 20,001? And if it could possibly be misread as 20,001, then start making some script L's instead of straight lines for L's. Okay, anyway, unit ratios are used to convert units. That's the whole point. And we'll show you how this works in just a second. Before we do that, let's flip the page and look at several conversion factors. You probably know most of these already, but if there are some here that you don't know, it's not a bad idea to highlight them, maybe stick them on um, a note card or something. Most people are pretty good with one foot being equal to 12 inches, but they might not know that one mile is 5,280 feet. They might not know that one ton is 2,000 pounds. Uh, people are pretty good with time and quarts and gallons, but one quart equaling two pints might be unfamiliar to you as well. So put them on some note cards if you don't know them already. The steps for converting units are here. So let's talk about those for just a second. Um, we're going to start with our original measure and write it as a fraction if we have to. We're going to multiply the fraction by some unit ratios. And in this type of problem, you really want to keep the units in your work so we can make sure that we're choosing the unit ratio that's helpful. And finally, we need to round so that we have the appropriate number of significant digits. So let's take a look at an example and see how this works. Try to keep our steps visible here. So we have a volume that was measured. And the word measured here, or anything that implies that we have a measurement, is really important. This is 870 and 3 tenths quarts but that's a measured quantity. It is not exactly 870.3 quarts, right? We've got that little bit of error associated with every measurement. So we want to know about how many gallons is that? And the first thing we need to do is write our original measure as a fraction. So we'll take this 870.3 quarts. Oh, that's terrible handwriting. Hold on a second, let me fix that. I'm not sure if that's any better, but we'll go with it. There we go, 870.3 quarts, and we're going to write this as a fraction over 1, just so we can keep track of the numerator and the denominator. And now we're going to multiply by a unit ratio. What do we know about quarts and gallons? Let's come over here to the side. We know that 4 quarts is equal to 1 gallon. Okay, so at this point, stop writing and just watch for a second. Remember that we have two possible choices for unit ratios. We can write 4 quarts divided by 1 gallon, or we can write 1 gallon dividing by 4 quarts. If we start off with 4 quarts over 1 gallon, and we look at the units, multiplying straight across would give us some sort of number of quart times quart, which is quart squared per gallon. And I have no idea what a quart squared per gallon is. It doesn't make any sense at all. So I've chosen the wrong unit ratio. I don't want this. What I really want is one gallon for every four quarts. And the nice thing about this is that the unit of quarts in the numerator cancels with the unit of quarts in the denominator. And you've seen common units divide out before. So this is the unit ratio that we want, and right now it's not a bad idea just to pause the recording for a second 
and catch up with me in your notes because this is the spot where we want to be. Okay, so from here, let's just see what we have. In the numerator, we have 870.3 multiplied by 1, but the units are gallons. In the denominator, we have a 4, and there are no units left in the denominator at all. So now we're just going to divide. What do we have here? Um, 870.3 divided by 4 is 217.575. And it feels like we'd like to write this whole number down, but we can't. We can't because the error associated with 870.3 quarts has to come along with the calculation. It's the significant digits that tell us what part of this we get to keep. So let's see. Here's how we round, or at least decide how we're going to round. We look at all of the numbers involved. So let's see, we started off with um, 870.3, and this is a measured value. So we'll count its significant digits. It has four. We have one quart. That was part of our conversion factor. It's an exact value. So it has infinitely many significant digits. We also have a value of four in there for the four quarts. And that's also part of the exact conversion factor and it has infinitely many significant digits. And the rule is when we're multiplying or dividing, we want to round the final result so that it has as many significant digits as the value with the fewest significant digits. So this is what we're going to use, four, four significant digits. So we'll take this uh, 217.575 and round there, which means our answer is 217 round here, 0.6 gallons. And that's pretty much it. Fairly straightforward. So let's try a couple of others. The fact that we are measuring makes all the difference in the world. The error that's associated with your initial measurement is should be the same error that's associated with your converted measurement. And let's take a look at what a difference this can make. Let's flip to the next page. Okay, the greatest possible error of measurement is determined when the measurement is made. And that's really important. Unit conversion is not allowed to change this. So unit version, sorry, unit conversion cannot affect the precision of the measurement. Okay, so let's talk about seven feet. How many inches are in seven feet? You'd think that'd be a fairly easy question, but it depends because the seven feet, we're pretty sure, is a measurement who was measuring and how carefully were they measuring. So let's start with an example where somebody is just looking at something and saying, ah, I think that's about seven feet long. If you're estimating visually, well, there's a pretty good chance that seven feet is, uh, well, the right way to say things and that the true length is sitting here somewhere between six and a half feet and seven and a half feet. All right, we're just rounding to the nearest whole foot. People do this all the time. All right, so let's see what would happen here when we start converting. Just like before, we're gonna write seven feet as a fraction over one. 
we're going to multiply by a conversion factor. And we have a choice. Do we want 12 inches in the numerator and one foot in the denominator? Or should we flip that fraction upside down and have one foot in the numerator and 12 inches in the denominator? And the easiest way to do it is to start with the denominator. We already have feet in the numerator, so let's put feet in the denominator. One foot is worth 12 inches. Just like before, we'll watch those common units cancel. 7 times 12 is 84. And the units that have survived are here. Those are our inches. So there we go, 84 inches. And now it's time to round. Yeah, we have to round. We can't just leave it at 84 inches. If you say 84 inches, then you mean something that rounds to 84 inches, and we'd be had that greatest possible error of half of an inch. But before, we had a greatest possible error of half a foot. Those aren't anywhere close to the same size. So we have to take that original error and make sure it translates when we convert the units. So here we go. Let's round. What numbers were we using? We used 7 feet. That was a measurement. And that has one significant digit. We had 12 inches. That's exact because it came from the exact conversion factor. It has infinitely many significant digits. And then, of course, we had the one foot that was part of the exact conversion factor also. And it had infinitely many significant digits. We follow the rules and choose the value with the smallest number of significant digits, which is here. And that's how we round. So when somebody looks at something and says, I think it's about 7 feet, saying it is about 80 inches, would be about the same. Because if we say 80 inches and we've just got that one significant digit there, we're rounding to the nearest 10 and the true length is between 75 inches and 85 inches. And that's about the same as being between six and a half feet and seven and a half feet. It feels like a fairly wide span and this span here is about the same size as this span here. Okay, well let's say we didn't look at something and just guess that it was seven feet long. Let's say we pulled out a tape measure. If we pull out a tape measure, then things change a little bit. All right, we have a little more precision attached to our measurement. Our tape measure probably goes to the 16th of an inch, and if you divide 1 by 16, you can see it's fairly safe to assume that we get at least the first decimal place, and so we would be okay in saying this is 7.0 feet. I know you'd think that that point zero wouldn't matter at all, but it does. It's not going to change the calculation in the middle, but it does change the greatest possible error that comes with your measurement. This 7.0 feet means that the true measure is somewhere between 6.9 feet, sorry, 6.95 feet, and 7.05 feet, right? Things that would round to 7.0. So when we get all the way done, we would come back to the calculation we had before. Let me slide back up here. There we go, this one. It's not going to look any different. We're still going to end up with 84. The question is, how much of that do we get to keep? The 12 inches and the 1 foot are still parts of an exact conversion factor, so they're not going to change. But now we have 7.0 feet as our measurement. And that has two significant digits. So now we can say that 7 feet is about 84 inches. Notice that we're not saying it's exactly 84 inches. We still have some error here. 
with two significant digits, that true length is between 83 and a half inches and 84 and a half inches. So the span here and the span here are about the same size. And so that's the thing that matters when you're working with measurements, is to convey to people the precision of your measurement so that they know what sort of span you have for the true value. And we can maintain that when we make conversions. Okay, so let's just start becoming fluent at this now. And we'll give this one here a shot. We have a weight that measures as 175.4 ounces. We want to turn this into kilograms. I will tell you that one kilogram is about 2.20 pounds, and you should already know how many ounces are in a pound. Write that down. Hopefully you said 16 ounces. All right, so here we go. Step number one. 175.4 ounces. Do something so that the O doesn't look like a zero. A lot of people write OZ in cursive, so they're hooked together. Anyway, 175.4 ounces over one. And now we will start to multiply. What do I know? Well, I've got ounces here, so we're gonna use this conversion factor first. We have one pound worth 16 ounces. Units of ounces cancel. If I were to stop my calculation here, I would end up with a certain number of pounds, but I don't want a certain number of pounds. So I wanna take this one kilogram is equal to 2.20 pounds, and I'm gonna put the 2.20 pounds in the denominator so that the common units will cancel. Pounds cancel with pounds. And then we see what we have. All right, here we go. 175.4 divided by 16. And then divide again by 2.20. And that's what we have. Let's write this down. 4.982954, stuff, 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 stuff. And those, of course, are kilograms. All right, so now the question is, where should we round this number to? We're not just gonna pick any old spot that we want. We're gonna do this carefully. So your job is to look here at step three at all of the values that got used in this calculation and decide whether or not they are exact or inexact. And inexact means like measured. Give it a shot, see what you can do. All right, so the 1.754 pounds was measured. It said that in our original problem. So we can count the significant digits here, and that would be four. One kilogram is part of a conversion factor. This is the exact part. So we treat it as if it has infinitely many significant digits. 2.20 pounds, this is the inexact part. So we need to count those significant digits, and hopefully you counted them as three. The one pound here and the 16 ounces here don't really factor in because these are both going to have infinities associated with them in terms of significant digits anyway. What matters is that we pick the one with the smallest number of significant digits. So when we round this value, we want to catch three digits. And that means 175.4 pounds is about Oh, that's not right. That should be ounces. 175.4 ounces. I knew that didn't look right. Is about 4.98 kilograms. Okay, that's the way it goes. 
it's a lot of steps when you write them all out, but for the most part we do most of these things in our heads. Let's try one more. We don't have quite so much clutter here. All right, so what I'd like you to do is maybe just draw a line here so we can save some space up there. And the first thing we want to do is start the conversion. We have a measured 6.71 quarts. You know to write that as a fraction over 1. And then we want to start multiplying by some conversion factors. So that's what I'd like you to do. Multiply by whatever conversion factors you need to get to centiliters. And then come back and we'll see what to do about the significant digits. So hopefully you multiplied by 1 liter over 1.0567 quarts first and you watched the units of quarts cancel and then you multiplied by 100 centiliters in every 1 liter and you watched those units of liters cancel so that everything comes out now in centiliters. When we calculate, we have 6.71 divided by, whoops, that's not right, 6.71 divided by 1.0567, ah, 6, 7, oh my, I'm missing things, my pen is kind of, well, having some sensitivity issues today. Let's try this again, 6.71 divided by 1. 0.0567. And then we'll multiply that answer by 100. All right, that's looking better. 634.9957, stuff, stuff, stuff. And those are all centiliters. All right, so now we just need to figure out how many significant digits do we need? And I'm just going to make a little bit notation up here. So the 6.71 quarts, that's measured. It has three significant digits. This one liter is part of that inexact conversion factor, but this is the part that is considered to be exact. That piece has infinitely many significant digits. Over here, this is the inexact part. 1.0567 has five significant digits. This is an exact conversion factor, so both of these have infinitely many. Right? And our job was to pick out the one with the smallest number of significant digits. So we would need to do our rounding here. And that would mean a volume measured as 6.71 quarts is about 630 round to five, because of the nine over here, centiliters. There, not so bad, right? Okay, let's flip the page and see what else we have going. Conversion factors within a measurement system, perhaps you've already noticed this. If we're going from feet to inches or um, quarts to gallons, and we stay within the U.S. system, or if we stay within the metric system, these are always exact things. Units within a system are defined in terms of each other. We don't approximate them. When we switch systems, that's when the approximations start to appear. Of course, there are a lot of tables out there containing conversion factors, but they don't contain every conversion factor you might possibly need. Sometimes we have to make our own, and we can combine conversion factors to make other conversion factors. Let's try this here. The process really isn't any different. We have one week equal to how many minutes, and since we're creating a conversion factor, this week is not a measured quantity. This is something exact, infinitely many significant digits. Well, what do we know about a week? A week is seven days. 
infinitely many significant digits, infinitely many significant digits. One day is equal to 24 hours. Exactly. And one hour is equal to 60 minutes. Exactly. So everything here has infinitely many significant digits. And that will change things just a smidge, not a lot. Let's start with what we started off with before. This is going to be the place we start just like it was one week over one. You've seen things where we've had to use multiple conversion factors before, and they've generated more than one unit ratio. We would need to take uh, seven days in one week. Watch the units cancel. And then multiply by 24 hours in one day. Watch the units cancel. And then multiply by 60 minutes in one hour and watch the units cancel. Oops, wrong color. All right, so now we're ready to calculate. We have seven times 24 times 60 and we end up with 10,080 And the next question is about the rounding. And we don't have to round it all because everything that we used was exact. We should probably write that down. No rounding necessary. All of the conversion factors were exact. So one week is exactly 10,080, whoops, and these are minutes. Minutes remained here as the only unit that didn't divide out. All right, so now your job is to do this last one. And the only thing that's going to be different here is the fact that we have one exact conversion factor and one inexact conversion factor. Pause the recording, give this a shot, and come back when you're done, and we'll see how you did. Okay, so the first thing that I'm going to do is just keep track of all of these significant digits so I don't clutter up the space I want to use for that. We're creating a conversion factor. So this one kilogram, that's going to be the exact part. Infinitely many significant digits. One ton equaling 2,000 pounds is an exact conversion factor. One kilogram is part of an inexact conversion factor. So this 2.2046 pounds has five significant digits. All right, and so we'll be paying attention to that at the very end. And hopefully you started off with one kilogram and you multiplied by 2.2046 pounds per kilogram. And then you multiplied by, let's see, oh yes, because our kilograms will cancel out. Then you multiplied by one ton for every 2,000 pounds. And we watched those units cancel out. And then we would calculate. So we have 2.2. Ah, I did it again. I guess I must just be going too quickly here. 2.2046. Six divided by 2,000. 
and that's a very small number, which we expect because a kilogram is um, comparable to a pound, and a pound is nowhere close to a ton. It's a very, very small part of a ton. So we have 0 0.0011023 tons. And we decided that we were going to keep five significant digits. And these zeros up front, remember those are not significant. The first significant digit is the one. And so the five digits are right there. We actually don't have to round anything at all. All right, so we give ourselves some notes here. Keep five significant digits. And one kilogram is about 0 0.0011023. And we want all of these numbers because we want to keep that same precision in the end result that we started with. And the place where we had that precision was here in this conversion factor. There we go. And that's about it. All right, so in our next lesson, we'll do uh, some more conversions, just some that have a little bit more meat to them. Practice these, become really good at them, and then we'll see you during the next lesson. Have a great day. Bye-bye.